Hello everyone and welcome. This is going to be an in-depth review of the Wildwood Tarot where wisdom resides by Mark Ryan and John Matthews with illustrations by Will Worthington. I had the privilege of picking this deck up a couple of weeks ago and I've been asked to do a video review by friends here in the United States as well as in the United Kingdom. So I feel extremely honored that I have been asked to do this video. As most of you know, I've been into the pagan tradition since I've been a teenager uh, for, you know, over 20 years as I'm approaching uh, my 38th year. Um, and during that time, I've been exposed to a lot of uh, many different energies, a lot of many different methods and ways of um, praising and worshiping the earth, uh, nature, the old gods, and interaction with them. The Wildwood Tarot supports these ideas and these clauses. Uh, the Wildwood Tarot follows the Will of the Year very closely. Uh, it is a very unique system unlike any other for the mere fact that it does not mimic the Raider Waite or the Thoth style of Tarot reading. To me, uh, it's not really uh, based upon any system other than its own. The way the Wildwood Tarot is set up is you begin as a novice, as a wanderer, as the fool. You start your journey as the fool, just as within any tarot deck. One thing about the wanderer is that you are entering into the wild wood, into the wild unknown. Uh, very a perfect analogy for uh, opening the front door, walking out, you know, starting your day. Uh, whether it be magnificent or mundane, you know, it's all about new beginnings, about growth, uh, about being, you know, a tad bit naive. It's all about, you know, a learning experience, if you will. Uh, so, you know, you can imagine as we step foot, you know, as the fool's journey into the wild wood, uh, have perfect, you know, hyperbole and um, symbolism, you know, for everyday, day-to-day -day life. Uh, following the will of the year not only helps you to understand the seasons and the tides, it helps you understand life in general, your place within life, within the world, uh, within the cycle, your place within nature. Uh, as we all know, uh, during the spring, everything is birth, renewed. Uh, we go into the summer, which is all about <clears throat> excuse me, fertility and prosperity. Then when we see the fall, it begins to wane, and then in the winter, everything becomes, you know, uh, dead and barren again. It's a cycle. It's a cycle just like life. As we are born and we grow up and are raised, you know, we are the spring. When we become adults, you know, we become uh, like the summertime where we're, where we're grown, we're ripened. You know, that would be like in our 30s and 40s, you know, maybe. And then we would go into the fall, uh, you know, which would be, you know, the waning where we see the fruits of our labor uh, and our rewards, you know, through hard work and through uh, living and experience. You know, we would see that, you know, within our in our latter part of 40s, 50s, uh, maybe even close to 60. And then we would see the winter returning, you know, into the, the senior years, into the golden years would be the winter time. So, you know, it really makes sense. This deck has really helped me come forth and understand, you know, my place, not only within day-to-day -day life, but my place within the will of the year, my place within nature, and my place within the world. So I've really had a lot of rewards with working with this deck, maybe within the past month or so. Uh, I'm no way claiming to be a, uh, you know, I'm still a novice with this deck is what I'm trying to explain, and I'm still finding out a lot of the inner workings. Um, so far as the, you know, uh, this deck would be great for setting intentions. I know a lot of people, you know, buy tarot decks not merely because of the actual, you know, divination mechanism behind it, but the actual, you know, setting intentions. And I feel that this deck would be one that would be very worthwhile in setting intentions because of the fact of it goes upon the fool's journey uh, quite like no other deck I've ever seen. Um, the cardstock itself is very good quality. I'm very impressed with this cardstock uh, from this uh, 
Sterling Ethos, I believe. Maybe that's the publisher, if I'm not mistaken, guys. I'm very pleased, <clears throat> excuse me, not only with the card quality and the card stock, I'm very pleased with the colors because that's one thing that threw me off from this deck from purchasing it uh, for a while. <clears throat> excuse me. We're getting into harvest, guys, so the, the allergies are, are upon us. Um, I really do like some of the muted colors because it lets you really take a delve and take a deeper look into into the uh, symbology of the deck here. Uh, the guidebook is very generous. Uh, it's a full size, full page guidebook. It has around 160 pages, give or take. Um, it has the illustration of the card, the description, the meaning, and the reading points of the card. Okay. Um, it does explain some things about the will of the year in here. Um, it does have a lovely map. Uh, there's a spread that goes along with the will of the year. There's a bow spread, a pathway spread. A pathway spread would be one of the easier spreads to do. It would be a three-card draw, the issue, the action to avoid, and the action to take. Uh, this would be, this is a very simplistic, this is a very simple reading that I have uh, taken advantage of since I'm learning this new uh, system. Um, you also have the world tree spread for very complex uh, questions and have very gives you more of a broad and comprehensive view of the issue or situation at hand. And I followed the will of the year pretty much, you know, for, for years, but this is the first year that I have been like really active in following, you know, the traditions and, you know, being symbolic. Uh, about what the what the days actually mean. Um, I've really enjoyed myself this year. I've really found out about a lot about myself, a lot about what I need in life and what I don't. Uh, I've, I've, it's helped me to find balance in my life. I am a Gemini, so I constantly struggle for balance. Um, I'm constantly trying to uh, either bring my thoughts and ideas into being or I'm trying to uh, not overthink and live in my head so much, and I'm trying to enjoy the present and enjoy the moment. Um, and, you know, sometimes overthinking it can be just as bad as not putting enough thought into, into action. You see what I'm saying? Uh, just being folly. Uh, sometimes overthinking can be the same thing because it keeps you stuck, and therefore you're not making any progress. So I've, I felt that this deck has helped me come down to earth a little bit. It's helped root me and ground me a little bit more. It's helped me to realize what I need in the here and now in order to have a better tomorrow and the day after and the day after. Um, it's helped me break uh, some of the patterns and habits that I didn't even realize that I had that, that are negative. Um, so yeah, this deck has really uh, gave quite a return to me considering that this deck, it, it retails for $19.95 with this box set, um, but I found this um, on sale, I think I got it for anywhere between $13 and $15 maybe, and I had a gift card that a friend gave me for my birthday, and there was money left on the gift card, so I did go ahead and pick this up because it had been like bummy, bummy, bummy for so long now. Um, before I went on my trip to Florida, uh, like right before the, the spring equinox, you know, like uh, basically around, you know, um, maybe Yule time last year, the, maybe the change of the year, getting close to the, the beginning of this year, somewhere in that time, this deck started calling out to me, and I'm like, uh, you know, and I ended up getting the Druidcraft Tarot because it was so exquisite. I love the Druidcraft Tarot. It has a lot to bring to the table, but there is, there is no other system quite like the Wildwood Tarot. Uh, I will say that from what little bit I know about it, and I'm, I'm enjoying Every day that I get to work a little bit with it and get to delve more into the wild wood and discover more about myself and my place within everything. Um, getting back to the shamanistic roots here, talking about ancestry, ancestral magic, uh, about getting to the root of things. Uh, I really, really like that. So, without further ado, I'm going to show a few of the cards really quickly uh, because the video is already going on 10 minutes. And... Um, Unfortunately, as much as I would love to sit here and chat about Tarot all day long, uh, I do have quite a list of things to get accomplished today. So, without further ado, we're going to introduce the cards. You guys have already seen the Wanderer, which is the Fool. 
For the Magician, we have the Shaman. And this card just gives me goosebumps, guys. I, 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 there's so many uh, words in, that come to mind when I see this card. I love everything about it. It is so detailed. Uh, it, it, there's so many things that you can depict and read out of this card. Talking about skill and knowledge. Grasping that. Living the life. I mean, he is in it to win it, honey. Oh, the illustrations on the back are absolutely exquisite. It's the world tree, as above, so below. And those of you who know me know I have no tattoos. I'm 38 years old. I do not have a tattoo. And up until, like, this year, I would never consider getting tattoos. Uh, but this is something that I would consider actually having on my person. I don't know why, because it's, like, larger than life. You know, I have to put it across my back, but I think it is so gorgeous. And I've been doing a lot of work with the runes here lately also, guys. I've been going back um, kind of with some of my Celtic roots, you know, on my grandmother's side. And I had a set of runes through my teenage years. And here lately, I've been really wanting to do the runes again. Uh, number one, uh, because I feel called to them. Number two, um, my gods have told me to work with the runes that runic magic and sigils are where it's at. Uh, you know, it's a kind of like a universal language that a lot of the spirits speak. So, and of course, when we talk about symbology, when we see Nike or we see Starbucks or we see whoever, we don't even need a word behind it. We just see the symbol and we're like, oh, we know what that is. So it's kind of the same principle. Sorry for getting off track, but um, I've been doing a lot of uh, rune uh, working too. And there's a few runes that I wouldn't mind having tattooed on my person. Uh, we have the seer for the high priestess. And she is one of the most... Um, I'm trying to think of what word I'm trying to use to describe her. Uh, the High Priestess is one of the most secretive, one of the most uh, alluring cards in the deck, the Seer. Because it's all about, you know, tapping into those hidden, hidden knowledge, hidden agendas, the third eye, psychic uh, powers, the moon, women's mysteries, the earth. It's, it's about tapping into all of that. I love the illustration. She's got the cauldron of life here. Uh, notice that she is wearing and she is cloaked uh, by the the owl, which represents wisdom. But it's like she's not weighed down by it. It's like she she freely wears it upon her. Um, I love all the symbology in the card. And, you know, she's grounded and she's rooted and she's just doing her thing. We have the green woman as the empress and she has Caridwin's cauldron here. And, of course, you can, those of you familiar with Celtic mythology, the Sheila de la Sheila de Najig, which is basically the womb of the goddess, like the birth of where all things come from, the mother goddess, and the cauldron of life, the green woman. Then we have the green man, and the green man is one, one deity that has really showed himself to me this year. Um, I've spent a lot of time up at Heber Springs, uh, around Grisbury Lake, um, Indian Hills, um, and I have really felt the green man's energy. I've seen him. I felt him. Um, I've also felt a lot of this uh, Kernunus, Serenus, however you want to say it, which brings me to the next card, the Ancestor. And this is one of the energies that I, this card and this energy right here, I felt so strongly uh, when I was in what's called the Sacred Grove. That's what my husband and I named this, named this place in Heber Springs. Um and I felt this energy too. So this deck speaks to me on volumes. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a, a, a birch tree. And the birch tree is always uh, one that, like after the last ice age, you know, the birch tree was the first tree to to help repopulate. Um, it's all about new beginnings and springtime and all that. So I love that there's a lot of tree associations in here. So I also am proudly uh, owner of the Spirit of Nature Oracle, which talks about trees and ohms. We have the Forest Lovers, which features Maid Marian and Robin Hood, and they're doing a pagan hand fasting ceremony. And before, you know, before the churches took over, before uh, things were cantonized and colonized and Christianized, um, you know, a lot of the things took place in the sacred groves under the oak trees you know that was the churches before the churches were there um so you know we have you know the binding
the, the, the binding and the vows, you know, under the oak tree versus the church. I'm sorry, guys. I had a little moment there. Uh, the archer. I really like this card because it's like, you know, it's pointing towards your goal, your target, all of that. It's all about standing up for the underdog. Um, defending those who can't defend themselves. <clears throat> the stag. This is another card that just gives me chills. Uh, I find... A, a lot of things very um, chilling about the stag and about the Serenos energy and about the Lord of the Wild and all of that. It's kind of a dual-edged sword. The hooded man, of course, you know, the her uh, the hermit. I started to say the Hierophant. Love this card. We have the wheel, which is the loom, weaving that tapestry. Creation, the wheel turns, and of course you can see like the different seasons here. You can see that it's night and day. You can see that we have a little bit of, of uh, different weathering around the card. So it's like talking about the will of the year, of course. My ears are popping. I think I'm trying to get a message from one of my gods, maybe. Uh, the Woodward. We have the mirror. And I forgot to mention, guys, as you go into the deck, these cards are associated with the, the spring, the summer, the fall, the winter. As, of course, I've explained, you know, with the will of the year. Um, of course, you know, we have winter from the ancestor. This would be more of a spring card. This would be like Beltane. This would, you know, May 1st. May Day, May Paul. Um, then we would be going into the summertime. Or, excuse me. It's more like winter. Then fall, or fall, excuse me. Fall. Because we have Journey, which would be kind of like the death card. Oh, my foot. Mm, balance. I love this card. It makes me think of Camelot, King Arthur. It makes me think of all the Arthurian, Arthur, Arthurian. How have you said that about King Arthur? Um, the Guardian. This would be like Samhain. This would be quite like close to Halloween time. What we're getting to now. Uh, the Blasted Oak, which is all about you know. Um, Sometimes falling off that pedestal. Sometimes, you know, you have to destroy something for something new to grow in its place. Um, it's kind of like the, the, it's kind of like a cross between the hanged man and the tower, if you will. Then we have the pole star, of course, which is the star. I love how the guy's in the woods and he finds himself to a clearing and he's finding the star. It's all about direction. The moon on the water. I love it. You have the sun. The sun of all life. Everything's restored. And we have spring, summer coming into play here. A lot of Celtic uh, scroll work there. The great bear. Be more like I can think of like the judgment card if you would. The world tree, which is the world. I love this card because we have, like I was explaining, we have the spring, the summer, the fall, the winter. And of course, we have the uh, circle of life there, a little door going into it, the labyrinth. Then we go to the court cards, guys. And for instead of pentacles, we have stones. Uh, we have bows instead of wands. We have arrows instead of swords. And we have vessels instead of cups. And of course, they are very rooted in nature. Also, we have the Ace of Stones with the Foundation of Life. I like the wording that's on the cards. He factors here. I love this. This reminds me almost of Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, when the little girl is descending down into the uh, cavern. And the, the huge stone is there, and then the, the spiral is there in the middle. 
The two of stones is challenge, and we have the hair. And what is very weird, guys, um, I've lived in Arkansas, you know, my whole life. Arkansas is the natural state. I've been through the wood, been through all different kind of woods, mountains. My grandmother is from the hills. Um, and in all of those days, I've never seen a hair until about, oh, a month or six weeks ago, I saw a hair. I went to my grandmother's house. We were uh, sitting, uh, having coffee, and we had the front door open, and there's a glass storm door that separates it from the, from the front porch. I left it open so that my, my dog could look out. And I go over there to see what's going on. There is a hair. He comes up the sidewalk. Now, my grandmother's got big bushes and then like a sidewalk that leads to the house. I see something. It stops, turns directly, looks at me, comes up almost to the porch steps and is looking at me. And it's on its hind legs, guys. I mean, it's, it's a hare. It's not a rabbit. It's a hare. And, of course, we all know the, the meanings behind the hair and the Celtic mythology. And, you know, hares a lot of times are witches uh, that have turned, transformed themselves, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I felt very empowered by that. I felt very empowered by that. So um, it kind of gave me the sense of, you know, there's going to be challenges and trials and tribulations coming across. But stand, you know, on your own two feet, you know. Box if you have to, you know, fight your way through it. Uh, it's all part of nature. It's part of, you know, the rhythmic cycle. Because sometimes, you know, when things happen to us in life, guys, we wonder, okay, have I done something wrong? Am I crossed? Am I cursed? Do I need to do, you know, cleansings or candle burnings? You know, sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. Sometimes it's just part of nature. It's like, you know, you have to weather the storm. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, let's use a tree analogy. You know, trees lose their leaves in the fall and through the winter, but they still stand strong and proud, knowing this too shall be over. And in the spring, again, they rejoice. Their leaves are back. The birds are back in their branches. They're singing. So sometimes we have to kind of use that analogy and apply that to our life. Um, we have the Three of Stones for creativity. This reminds me of the part of the Sacred Grove up there at Heber. Um, I actually fell and rolled down. I found some stones. I know it's not funny. I didn't hurt myself, but that'll teach me to wear proper footwear while hiking. And I'm either barefoot when I'm hiking or I'm in flip-flops every time. Usually I take the flip-flops off and I barefoot hike. And most people think I'm crazy, but hey. Okay, we have the four of stones for protection. I love this. This little deer has found shelter uh, among the stones. Love it. Five of Stones, Endurance, and that's basically what I was just talking about, guys, when I was talking about Enduring the Storm. You can see that she is, she's she got her rock, her shelter. Uh, she is illuminated. She has her fire for her light, her warmth uh, to help her uh, uh, cooking, whatever is needed. And weathering the Storm. We have Six of Stones, Exploitation. Uh, this looks like famine. Uh, it looks like, you know, uh, needing help. Seven of Stones is healing, and we have the Green Woman here again. Guys, I got goosebumps. Oh, my gosh. We have the Green Woman here again for healing. She's in the Sacred Circle, channeling that, that nature, energy, power of the plants and the stones. Uh, Eight of Stones, skill. You can see he's burning the midnight oil. He's leaving his mark, his maker's mark. Look at that. Nine of Stones is tradition, and we have this Eranos energy. Kernunos, however you want to pronounce that. And he has the uh, torque and the snake. Tradition. You can take this card in many different ways, guys. Tradition means a lot of a lot of different things. A lot of different things. Ten of stones, home. There's very few cards in this deck I do not like. Then for the Court cards, of course, are animals. We have the page of stone is the lynx. The knight would be the horse. The queen of stones is the bear. And the king of stones is the wolf. We're hurrying along, or moving along, excuse me, we have the ace of arrows, the breath of life. 
We have the two of arrows for injustice. Three of arrows for jealousy. It's a very powerful card there. Four of arrows for rest. That's a powerful message too, guys, because sometimes uh, we're too busy trying to get things done. Sometimes we just need to rest and relax. We all need time to refresh ourselves. Even the earth does. That's why we go through winter. Five of arrows. Frustration. Feel like you're just dodging bullets all the damn time. And it's very funny because it's a goat. <laughs> and, you know, goats are supposed to be kind of, can be kind of a little cranky. Or is it a ram? Yeah. Six of arrows, transition. And you can see that the, it's breaking from, uh, the dusk, or uh, the twilight, or dusk, or whatever you want to call it, into the moonlight. So it's like, you know, you're moving away, uh, you're, you're, you're closing the door, you're, the sun is setting on one chapter, and illumination into a, a new chapter, okay? And this all, of course, has to do with feelings, because we're talking about water, we're talking about the moon. Uh, we have seven of arrows for insecurity. Eight of arrows is struggle. Struggle is real in this card. Nine of arrows is dedication. First you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Practice makes perfect. The ten of arrows is instruction. And you can see that it looks like the grandfather is teaching the grandson all the ins and outs of bow hunting, how to focus, keep your eye on your target. The Knight of Arrows is the Hawk. We have the Page of Arrows is a Wren, and of course all of you know Wren is one of the birds sacred to the Celts. That would be another beautiful name for a child, would be Wren. Queen of Arrows would be the Swan. And the King of Arrows would be the Kingfisher. Love this card. Next we have Bows for the suit of Wands, we have the Ace of Bows with Spark of Life. Two of Bows with Decisions. I'm like at a crossroads, like which way do I go? It's like when you feel really strongly about two things and you don't know which one to choose. Three of Bows would be Fulfillment, It'd be that proverbial fork in the road. Stop, halt, wait a minute. You know, one of these roads goes here, this one goes there. Which one will truly bring you fulfillment in the long run? You know, is it a want? Is it a need? Fine line between want and need. Four of bowls would be celebration. Oh, oh yeah. Four of bows would be celebration. Five of bows, empowerment. And you feel that male energy there. And, of course, you know, the erect phallus. All about that male energy, about that drive, about that go get them type deal. <clears throat> Six of bows would be abundance. Seven of bows would be clearance. Reminds me of uh, doing some either spring cleaning or more like fall, actually. Like in the fall when um, you're cleaning the yard and uh, burning limbs and... Um, Leaves and things. You're clearing out the the topsoil so that everything underneath can come through. Debris, cleaning your closets. Eight of bows, hearth fire. Nine of bows, respect. Well, there's a rumple stilt skin almost, doesn't he? Ten of Bows, Responsibility, and this is a very moving card. I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Druid Crafter Row pretty much draws similar to this image, and there is another deck that I have that is very similar to this also, and I can't think of it at the present time. But basically, it's all about, sometimes it's not all about you. Sometimes you have people counting on you, you know, to come through for them. And it's kind of like letting that be the fuel that drives you, you know. 
We have the Knight of Bows of the Fox. Love him. So sly, honey. Page of Bows is the Stoat. Then we have the Queen of Bows is the Hare. I just can't get over how majestic that hair was, you guys. I, I've never seen anything like it. And my grandmother lives in a very small town, but she still lives in a township, nonetheless. So, we have King of Bows, the Adder. Next, we have the Vessels, which stands in for the suit of cups. We have the Ace of Vessels, which symbolizes the waters of life. This would be a very good card for manifestation. The flow of abundance, fertility, life, all that. Mm, love it. Two of Vessels Attraction. I think the Vessels is, is one of my favorite suits. Three of Vessels Joy. Each one of them's cup is different. Each, each person's, what brings people, each person joy differs. You see what I'm saying? So you see the three different cups. Each one of their cups is different, but they're all overfilled with joy. And they're sharing that joy with each other. Four of Vessels is boredom. This is what I have a lot. Five of Vessels is ecstasy. <laughs> and I hate to laugh, but I, I can hear the rave music playing. And she's dancing. And wow. <laughs> Six of Vessel Reunion, and this is one of my absolute favorite cards in the deck. I love this card. The Ace of uh, Vessels, and this one would probably be my favorites. Seven of Vessels Mourning. This too shall pass. Sometimes it's only natural to you know to grieve. The grieving process is natural to life. Uh, death is one of the things that is natural to life. Uh, that's one thing about the will of the year that it teaches us that, you know, I hope spring is eternal. That's what I always say because spring is my absolutely, the, I love spring. And I'm, I'm fond of summer too. Um, but, you know, the fall, during the fall when the year begins to wane, I do feel a little bit of a sadness. But I also feel a little bit of a, a let go as in then I can let go of this now. This year has passed. Let me let go of this. Let me look forward to this for next year. Um, so, you know, the grieving process is essential to life. It's almost like a debrisment. And we don't know the sweets unless we have the sours. Eight of Vessels is rebirth, which comes right after this. So, you know, energy never dies. It just changes form. And that's one thing, you know, about, you know, paganism that, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, you know, a lot of people always fight over what happens when you die. What about the afterlife? What about this? What about that? Well, energy never dies. It just changes form. So that has brought me kind of a peace knowing that from where I came, I will return and I will return again. That kind of brings me a peace about death knowing that, you know, today is what it is. Tomorrow is never promised to us. And we have to try to make the best of our days. We have to live life to its fullest. We have to celebrate the life that the God and the Goddess have given us. Um, some days are not, not easy. Yesterday I had a really rough day. I cried for hours yesterday. I even went to the park yesterday and walked my dog. I cried at the park. I cried to an oak tree. I cried. I cried almost all day. And today um, I'm in better spirits. Um, I woke up, the sun was shining, the birds were singing. I get up and do a prayer to the sun every morning uh, to restore myself, and I get up and get on with my life. We have the nine of vessels for generosity, the ten of vessels for happiness, the nine of vessels for the eel, the page would be the otter. Oops, sorry guys, this video is going on 35 minutes. The Queen of Vessels, the Salmon. I love the Salmon. The Salmon swims upstream against all odds, against the current and everything to lay the eggs so that its babies, when you know, are born, can swim down the stream. So it's all about swimming against the stream, swimming against the tide. 
about, you know, uh, reaching your goal against all odds, about wisdom, about sacrifice. I love the sound. Then we have the king of vessels, the heron. This is one of my favorite birds. Uh, I've always felt drawn to the aigrettes, the herons, like the, 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 the fish bird, the water birds is what my husband calls them. Um, when I was in Florida, I got probably from me to my bedroom, which is about 20 feet. Well, probably yeah, about 20 feet from one. It's about the closest I've ever been to one. Uh, but they kind of have a, uh, they have some kind of energy about them that I really enjoy. So I kind of walked you guys through the deck. I know that the description probably wasn't as in depth as it could have been uh, when discussing about the will of the year and the way each card falls within the will of the year. Um, but this is a deck that I encourage anyone, especially those of, of you who are on the pagan path, uh, who are, or who, sh uh, excuse me, who study, uh, uh, you know, pre-Celtic shamanistic things, uh, who, who are studying, you know, kind of like the, maybe the birth of magic. Those of you who are looking towards your ancestors, those of you who are looking uh, to be more in tuned with, with nature, this is a deck that I would thoroughly recommend. You won't be disappointed.